better? Okay, are we good to go? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, so hi everybody. My name is Jennifer. Um, I work here at Jenkinson's Aquarium and I'm a marine biologist. So that's kind of my job. That's uh, been my job for many, many years, although I haven't always worked here at the aquarium. So a little bit about how kind of I got into what I did. Um, you know, I didn't take a, a very traditional path. You know, when I was growing up, you know, you kind of went to elementary school, you went to high school, you went to college, you got a job. That was just what people did. But I didn't really follow that same path. So after high school, I kind of took a couple of years where I just went to work and I didn't really know quite what I wanted to do with my job yet. Um, and then I realized that I had known since I was younger that I always wanted to be a marine biologist. So I said, okay, it's time to go to college and learn how to be a marine biologist. So I went to school. Now, when I got out of college, it wasn't easy to get right into being a marine biologist. It was actually kind of tough. So I ended up having to wait another couple of years till I was able to actually get into my job. And I was very lucky. I got one of the coolest jobs I've ever done in my life as a marine biologist. I used to work as a scientist for something called NOAA. So NOAA is the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. So when you guys get the weather reports, it's the NOAA guys that are telling us all of that weather report, okay? They have a lot of satellites. They have a lot of incredible mm -hmm. technology. Um, that was my friend. <laughs> so it was pretty amazing that I got to work for them. So I got to go out, and I used to actually go out on the commercial fishing boats, to get to um, get scientific data and kind of see what they were doing. So if you can imagine, I would go out to sea for sometimes up to a couple of weeks at a time um, where we would not see the land. We'd be out 150 miles or so. And I got to see some of the most amazing animals I've ever seen in my entire life. I would see kind of pods of pilot whales come swimming in or big, huge fin whales, which are 70 feet long or gannets. So gannets are these amazing seabirds and they actually hit the water at almost 70 miles an hour face first. So they're incredible. They're actually built for diving like that. So they hit the water so fast that they actually have their feathers are almost all the way attached to their bones because otherwise every time they hit the water, they'd have no feathers left because they hit the water so hard. They also don't even have nostrils like we do because if they had openings on their beak, they'd have water in their brain when they hit the water that fast face first. So that was pretty incredible to get to see. Um, so that was kind of a little bit about how I started. Now, one thing I learned is when you are a researcher in any field, when you're a scientist, um, you tend to spend a lot of time away from home. So I was in hotel rooms a lot. Um, I spent eight months down in a hotel room in Louisiana when the big oil spill happened down there. So I went down there and did some research down there. So for eight months, I was in a hotel room uh, very far away from my family. And it kind of occurred to me that I wanted something a little bit more kind of normal, so to speak, schedule wise, you know, I wanted to be able to come home at night for dinner. Um, I wanted to have a place that felt like a like an office or a job as opposed to kind of it all being, you know, pretty unpredictable, which is kind of what the life of a scientist was, it was like super unpredictable. I never really knew when I was going somewhere where I was going, um, how long I was going to be there for um, well, you know, I would get on a boat sometimes in Virginia and land in, you know, Rhode Island and have to figure out how to get on the buses and the trains and the car rides home. So I applied at the aquarium. And one thing I knew about jobs at aquariums is there's not a lot of them. A lot of people want to feed a dolphin or pet a seal or pet a penguin, but there's not a lot of jobs for them. So I got lucky there was an aquarium nearby where I live, which is Jenkinson's. So I sent in a volunteer application, I sent in an internship application, and I sent in a job application because I said, I need to just cover my bases. Any way I can get in the door, I'll do it. So I got an interview for all three, which they did on one day, which was good. <laughs> so I came in and I was very lucky and they offered me a position here. So what do I do here? Well, I've been here for eight years now. Um, I do a whole bunch of really awesome stuff. I am one of the African penguin supervisors. 
So what that means is I get to do everything from scrubbing penguin poop for several hours at a time to weighing a baby penguin chick the first day it comes out of the egg, which is pretty incredible. I also get to hand raise some of the penguins. So when they're about three weeks old, we actually hand raise them up until they're about three months old. So many of the penguins, including the one that I have hanging out with me today, are penguins that I actually met the very first day or a few days after they came out of the egg, which is pretty incredible. The other part of my job is I am a scuba diver. So I scuba dive in all of the tanks and help clean them and maintain them. And I help kind of oversee that and take care of things like making sure people have gear, making sure they know what they're doing and they feel comfortable and stuff like that. So uh, I get to dive with everybody, including the sharks. Um, so if anybody's afraid of sharks, I've dove with them hundreds of times probably at this point, and I have all my fingers and all my toes. I've never had a shark make me nervous before, um, so I don't have to worry about those at all. Honestly, the only animal that's ever made me a little tentative was our youngest seal, Noelani. When we first started diving with her, she would get really curious, so she'd come up to the divers and bite their equipment. Um, so one time she actually grabbed onto one of our divers, Steve zipper pulls. Oh. So you can hear me totally agree when we get when when you get in a wetsuit it's not really easy to zip it up so they have these really long strings attached to the zippers so that you can actually zip yourself into it and she grabbed his zipper pull and kind of pulled them across the tank because she was very excited to play with it so she's the only animal that ever made me really say okay I got to keep an eye on this one you know um so that that's kind of a little bit about what I do kind of how I got here um you know I know you guys are still kind of young right so you're still you're in sixth grade right Yep. Okay, so you guys have a long ways to go till you have to really figure out what you're going to do. But I can tell you that no matter what way you go, um, don't think that you always have to follow the same exact path as everybody around you. You know, you might find that as you go through school and as you kind of go past that and start to kind of really figure out what you like, maybe you want to do something that's not a lot of other people do. And that's okay. You know, you just got to find the right path that gets you the kind of where you want to go um, in your in your career and in your job and all that stuff. So, um, so I did bring a friend with me. I know you guys are very excited about Penguin Day for that reason. Um, I did before I bring him out because he kind of steals the show. I wanted to see um, if anybody does have any questions, um, kind of about being a marine biologist, about you know, kind of how this works now. Um, I know Ms. Salimi is going to, I don't know if she has a way that she wants to do questions. What do you think? What's that? You know what? I got it. Put your hand if you have a question. Okay, Jacob, I'll move yourself and ask the question. All right, Jacob, get to so we can ask the question. Uh, what's the scariest thing you've ever done? You know what? It's possible to see that, so you can do it again, and I'm going to have you talk into my computer, okay? All right. Okay. I think it was, and I, I think I got most of it. I think it was something like, what's the scariest thing I've ever seen? Is that what that was? Okay, here, Jacob. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna think. So, is that what's the scariest thing I've ever seen or done? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, I have to tell you, the scariest moment I've ever had in my career was I was out at sea on a boat, and the boat is a was 35 feet long, and we were in waves that were at least 13 feet high. So, what happens when that happens in really big waves is when the boat comes down the wave the nose of the boat actually goes under water. It goes under the wave in front of you. So the wave kind of comes right over the top of the boat and then washes out the back. Um, and we were in waves that high for about eight hours. And I have to tell you, it was a very small boat <laughs> and they were pretty big waves. And I think that was the, you know, I mean, parts of the boat were breaking off, which is always a little nerve wracking. Um, so I think that was probably the scariest thing I've ever been a part of. Now. When they teach you how to do that job, they teach you how to save yourself if you had to. And I thought if I ever had to do it, that was going to be the moment. I was going to have to worry about it. But I was very, very grateful that we made it home safe. Um, and I was very excited that we made it home safe. Scary enough, that boat, unfortunately, actually sunk 
about three months later. So I was so happy that we made it in okay that day. So that was definitely the scariest part of my career. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> okay. Okay, and when you guys ask me the question, um, because of kind of the sounds a little weird, if you want to get nice and close to the microphone so that I can hear it really clear, okay? Okay, I heard part of it. It was how long, what? How long did it take you to pick up the to go on the microphone? Okay, how long did it take... For, for you to pick a penguin, like to pick the penguin, it gets to go out and meet today. I still couldn't hear it. I'm sorry. I'm trying so hard. <laughs> do you okay. have a way? Do you have a way to write the questions down or text them or like a? Um, we could do that. Okay, guys. If you have a question, yeah, then this way we can get them. I can text them to Jennifer. Okay. Okay. okay there you go. Perfect. Yeah, because I want to make sure I get the question right. And I, I worry that, you know, as much as we love technology, sometimes it doesn't help us out in the morning, does it? <laughs> okay, it has to do with penguins. Cool. Okay, so let's see what that question is. And then what I'm going to do, by the way, too, is as we start asking these questions, I'm going to make sure. How long did it take for me to choose the penguin that I'm going to pick today? Uh, about five seconds. I absolutely love this guy. And when he's in a good mood, he is my favorite penguin to bring out and hang out with. So uh, it did not take me very long at all. <laughs> I knew right away exactly who I wanted to bring. And it was just a matter of whether he was in the mood for it. And so far today, he seems like he's been in the mood for it. So, yeah. Okay, I have another question coming through. Okay. All right, I'm sending it now. I'm okay. Ready. So, what were the challenges dealing? What are the challenges dealing with the penguins? Oh, that's a great question. So, working with penguins is like I. It's almost like I have eighteen kids that are all about three years old, except that they bite Ooh. hard. <laughs> so um, the challenge is making sure that we can give them the best care that they need um, and also make sure um, that we keep them safe, that we don't let them get sick, that we take care of them and knowing the whole time that they might bite us for it in the end. You know, So that can be the hardest part, yeah. So absolutely, that's a great question. Okay, it looks like we have another question coming in. Thank you guys for the good questions. Why do they poop a lot? Oh, that's a really good question because they eat a lot. They eat so much food. So my penguins eat what we say 10 to 20% of your body weight. So I want you guys to think of it this way. If you had a parent that weighed 150 pounds, they would eat 15 to 30 pounds of food every day. When you eat that much food, you poop a lot. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just a part of life. <laughs> so, yeah. How do they sleep? So, they can sleep one of two ways. They can either sleep standing up for short periods or they lay on their bellies and sleep. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do actually is I love that the questions are still coming and I definitely want to keep the questions coming, but I want to make sure that we have time to get to meet my friend too. So, I'm going to bring him out now um, while we're doing questions. And um, when I do, I'm going to kind of tell you a little bit about him um, and then we'll kind of keep the questions coming, okay? But I want to make sure that we have time to actually get to see him and hang out with him. Let me grab him quick, okay? So, everybody sit tight. Okay. Come on, my hand. Oh, you ready? Up, 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 up. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> so, this is my friend, Captain Jack. Hi, Captain He's Jack. Cute. He's very, very cute, right? Now, Captain Jack is a boy, obviously. Okay. And he is, oh my gosh, if I can believe it, I think he's almost five now. So he's probably four. Now, the cool thing about him is he actually has a little bracelet. So you guys can see his little bracelet. 
So the funny thing about penguins, oh, I know. Oh, I know. he's very ticklish and affectionate. So the funny thing about penguins is that you can't tell if they're boys or girls. By the way, what he's doing is he does this funny little thing where he flaps his wings. He's really cute. So the thing about penguins is you can't tell if they're boys or girls by looking at them. So the only way we figured out that Captain Jack was a boy is we took a little sample of his blood and we sent it to a scientist. And the scientist told us that he was a boy. And he's actually a twin. So his brother's name is Simon. And actually, his twin brother lives in California right now in San Diego. So once we figured out he was a boy, that meant his bracelet was going to go on his right wing. Okay. And then we gave him a color. So the first two beads are actually kind of a sparkly green color that's his color so whenever we see that we know we're talking about captain jack then that blue one that's his dad lp's color and then the pink one is his mom dasson now his mom dasson actually still lives with us as does his sister betty and he is an uncle to two boys kai and oswald so they both live with us at the aquarium so he's got a whole bunch of family around which is kind of sweet and fun so pretty neat huh yeah. <laughs> now after penguins they actually live in a warm weather you know so we always think about penguins living in the cold but these guys actually live where it's anywhere from you know 50 degrees at the very very coldest all the way up to 120 degrees at the hottest because they live on the coast of south africa so they actually don't really like the ice and snow um so we keep our exhibit pretty warm usually about like 70 to 72 degrees for these guys um and they do eat a ton so they eat capelin, um, which is kind of a silver fish about this big, squid sometimes, and they eat this little tiny fish. It's kind of like a zoo. Think about a penguin version of a potato chip, right? It's a little bit smaller, but it's not always as a, uh, it's got a little bit of fat in it, so it's not something we give them a ton of. So now right now, Captain Jack is actually paired up with one of our other penguins, Shadow. So Captain Jack and Shadow uh, have made a little nest together. And believe it or not, Shadow is actually our oldest penguin. So Shadow is 34. Now, that's pretty old for a penguin because most penguins only live to be maybe 15 to 18 years old. They don't really live that long. Um, whereas Captain Jack, you know, so in the wild, they're just getting eaten by predators or they can't find food or they can get sick or unfortunately oil spills actually can kill a lot of these guys um but when they live with people they don't have to worry about that stuff so we find them that they they tend to kind of live quite a bit longer you know so actually his girlfriend shadow is probably the 11th oldest penguin in human care in north america and her twin brother charlie who lives down at the georgia aquarium is 10th 10th oldest penguin so it's quite remarkable that she's as old as she is. So she's pretty spectacular. Yeah. Who's the oldest? Who's the oldest? Who's how old they are? I'm not sure who the oldest in captivity is and how old they are. Um, we would have to go into what we call Zims and mm -hmm. find out. So Zims is um, a huge database, guys, that zoos and aquariums that are all part of AZA, what they do is they have this huge database that keeps track of all their animals. So we would have to look in there to find out exactly how old that animal is. Um, I can tell you the oldest that ever lived as far as African penguins go was 46. It was a male and he lived to be 46 and there was the oldest female was 43. So those are kind of the oldest numbers. What are you doing standing up so tall? They can't see the top of your head. See? They can't see the top of your head. <laughs> so he's very cute. So these guys here, one of the cool things about them is that they're actually really, really, really well adapted to, to swimming in the water. So it's hard to see on him, but he actually has an extra set of eyelids. So he opens and closes his eyes like we do, but he's also got like a clear kind of cover that covers his eyes. Um, and that actually protects them when he goes swimming. Now, penguins are very unique because they can actually change the shape of their eye depending on whether they're in the water or not. So when they're not in the water, it's a different shape. And that lets them see just as well on land as they can in the water. And he's a little bit ticklish. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to climb up my arm at this point. I, I know what it is. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What are you doing? This is how I know Jack's my best friend. <laughs> is I can tickle him. 
do you guys have other now if you want if you want um we could definitely ask additional questions like if we have questions about penguins or if you guys still have some more questions about you know kind of working as a marine biologist and what that's like um you know where things like that you certainly you know we can certainly do that i think that texting worked great yeah so, um, so, biologist oh hi jack <laughs> <laughs> So go ahead and say that again. Um, do you have to get good grades to be a biologist? So they always have a saying, right? That the difference between um, a doctor that graduated with a D and a, a doctor that graduated an A is that you call them both doctor. <laughs> so I would say you should be good at math and science and you should enjoy it. That's the biggest thing. You want to be able to enjoy it because you really do have to learn a whole lot of stuff. You have to learn a lot about animals and about biology. You have to learn um, a whole lot about that stuff. So you really have to be good at um, kind of memorizing stuff because a lot of biology is just memorizing things. Um, you know, so you want to make sure you're good at that. Um, and you want to feel comfortable with things like math and science because it is a big part of my everyday life, you know chemistry is actually a part of my everyday life you know i have to know what water quality is i have to make sure that the water in the tanks that these guys live in is safe for them so i have to know what it means to have a nitrogen cycle or i have to know how to be able to test for things like nitrates and nitrites so you know you want to be able to you know you want to enjoy that stuff for sure yeah and i think that the harder you study and the the better you can keep your grades up the more opportunities you get when you start moving forward in your job you know so it's worth it to take the time and, and kind of spend those, that, that extra time studying and making sure you get the work done because it will definitely help you in the long run yeah for yeah. sure yeah. Ah, cool how handsome he is <laughs> so handsome such a handsome guy except for this little spot on his neck that's not feathers that's poop Oh, nice. He's got a poop spot on his neck this morning. I tried to clean it off, but it was not coming off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I need to be about three inches taller with him right now because he's so funny. He's just like, I love you so much. I love you so much, Jen. And I love everybody on the camera. I love being the center of attention. I think my yes. six years are out of question for, for now. If you have your own zip, right, and you can only have... If you had your own zoo and you okay. could have three animals on your zoo, Ooh. what would you have? What would I be what would I pick and why? Yeah. Three animals in my zoo. Okay. I would pick my first one's an easy one actually. I would pick pangolins. Pangolins? So, okay. Pangolins are highly endangered and very unique. And I think that they have a really, they have a really cute disposition. So what that means is it's really easy to care about a pangolin, right? So you would want an animal in your zoo that when people saw them, they really cared about them and wanted to help conserve them. So that would be the first animal for sure. Um, the next animal would be, hmm, let me think. <laughs> He's like extremely happy right now to stay out with you guys. So um, let me see. My next animal would probably be sand tiger shark. So I work with the sand tiger here. His name is Swash. He's about maybe eight feet long at this point. But they are also an animal that's in danger of becoming endangered, right? <laughs> Can you guys hear his little wings? He is so funny right now. So they're actually in danger of becoming endangered, and I think sharks are misunderstood. So I would really love to kind of teach people about why they're so special, you know, and kind of help them become less misunderstood, which I think would be cool. So that would be my second animal. And then the third animal is a tough one. Hmm. Let me think. Maybe an elephant. Cool. Because elephants are in the same boat where there's not very many of them. Um, I think there's a lot of elephants in Africa right now. Actually, like there's these reserves in Africa and there's so many elephants on the reserves that they're destroying the reserves. So they're trying to find homes for these elephants. And I would hate to see an elephant not 
you know, ha have to lose its life because you couldn't find a home for it. I think that's a crazy idea. So probably an elephant. But that's a tough question because I'll tell you, I would pick one of every animal I could. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, career explorer. Any questions? Okay, Xander has a question now. All right. All right, so Everett has another question too. Awesome. Okay, great. What's your question? Great. And again, if, if we have trouble hearing, you know, certainly feel free to send us your text. I got my phone right here with me. All right, I'm texting it. Okay. He has a question. Wave, say hi, Xander. Hi. <laughs> Okay. All right. What's my favorite animal? Oh, that's a really hard one. Oh, gosh. You guys ask tough questions. I love so many animals. Um, you know something? Since I was a kid, since I was about six years old, I think my favorite animals have always been sharks. They really have just been something I've been so passionate about throughout my whole life. Um, I've always loved white sharks. I got to see one out in the wild um, when I was researching for Noah, and it blew me away. I mean, it just took my breath away. It was such an incredible animal. Um, so I would say white sharks are definitely on the top of my list. And next to them would maybe be a whale shark or something really incredible like that. Yeah, I, I think that's, the, yeah, sharks are pretty high up for me. They've always been something I've really enjoyed and been passionate about. So, yeah. I just posted it. Yeah, okay. So, do the animals get attached to their keepers? Well, I think Jack has clearly demonstrated <laughs> sometimes they can get attached to us. So it depends on the type of animal. Um, penguins definitely do. Um, sharks, less so. Sharks and fish, most of them are pretty indifferent with us. Um, parrots are incredibly quick to get attached to their keepers. Um, so it really depends on the animal. Um, so some do and some don't. You know, so some can form really strong bonds um, and some could be a little more indifferent. I would say the warm blooded animals like the penguins, the seals, monkeys, parrots, um, other types of birds tend to get attached. Animals like reptiles and fish, I think, are a little bit more standoffish, a little less so. Yeah. If I could keep one endangered animal at my house, what would it be? Okay, I have to preface, preface this by saying I wouldn't keep an endangered animal at my house because... I would hope that we could keep them in uh, places that could help them with breeding and then hopefully get those populations up and healthy and release them. Um, but if I had to, it would be something low maintenance. It wouldn't be a penguin. Um, these guys are an endangered species, but they're way too high maintenance to have at my house. <laughs> so um, there's these really beautiful orange frogs from the rainforest. They're poisonous. Um, Panamanian golden frogs. And they are just absolutely gorgeous. And I feel like they would be low maintenance enough that I'd, I'd be willing to welcome them into my house. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, okay. All right, we have any other questions? Sixth grade career explorer. All right, I think that's it, Jennifer. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. I hope you've enjoyed getting to hang out with Jack. He's been absolutely wonderful, right? He's been so calm. You have to remember, just like it's weird for us to do this computer thing, it's kind of weird for him, too. He's a lot more used to seeing people. So um, you know, he's right along there with us. So you guys are doing a great job with it. Um, yeah, and he's uh, he's very excited to, to do that. So, All right, so if you guys don't have any other questions for us, I'm going to sign off then. All right? So everybody, if you guys all want to say goodbye to Jack, James, well you're not even looking at the waves. You're stealing my button. You're stealing my button. You can't have but you can't have my button. Here, right? Ready? We're gonna say goodbye to everybody. Say bye. 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 <laughs> all right, guys. Have a great day at school today. I hope you guys had fun. I had a great time talking to you guys, and good luck with everything that you guys do. Thank you. So, you're welcome. Bye. Bye. Okay. So now the trick is how do I do this? Uh, escape. Okay. Perfect. <laughs>